Now, first, uh, let us try to trace the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Now, it completely surrounds the neck like a collar. Okay, so it completely surrounds the neck like a collar, which you are able to see, and uh, it is attached posteriorly to the ligamentum nuke. Okay. It is attached to the ligamentum nuke posteriorly. Superiorly, it will be attached to the lower border of the mandible. Okay. And then it continues to the mastoid process, external uh, occipital protuberance, and that is the superior nuchal line. So, up to the superior nuchal line and in the posterior midline, what you see is the external occipital protuberance will be the uh, superior attachment of the deep cervical fascia. So, when you trace the fascia, uh, let us start from one point. From any point, we can actually start, but uh, we will do it from the anterior midline. So, here you are able to see a section of the neck uh, and uh, a transverse uh, section of the neck, okay? So, which has been cut horizontally. And you are able to see the impressions of the sternocleidomastoid. That is your cervical uh, vertebra, spine of the vertebra. So inside that you have the, uh, in the vertebral canal, what you see is the spinal cord. So these are all the muscles. And in front midline of the neck, you see the thyroid gland, trachea, esophagus. And uh, laterally, what you see is the carotid sheath with its contents. Now, let us trace this fascia, which you are able to see in the brown line is the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia. Okay. And uh, immediately deep to it, you are able to see the yellow color one lined fascia is the pretracheal fascia. And more posteriorly, this fascia, what you are able to see is the prevertebral fascia. Now, if you trace in the midline on either side, the investing layer is continuously Okay, it is continuous with the opposite side. Either way, you go from the midline, anterior midline. Okay, then more laterally, if you trace, what happens? It splits to enclose the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay, so it splits to enclose the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And then again, it unites and here it forms the roof of the posterior triangle. So, the roof of the posterior triangle will be formed by the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. And again, it splits to enclose the trapezius muscle. So, you, I hope you will remember these two are the boundaries, anterior and posterior boundaries of the posterior triangle. And finally, it gets attached to the ligamentum nuke and the cervical spine. Okay, so mainly it forms the roof of the posterior triangle and here also it forms the roof of the anterior triangle. So that is your uh, sternocleidomastoid and these are the infrahyoid muscles which you are able to see here. So your uh, sternothyroid, sternohyoid muscles and the inferior belly of the homohyoid muscles. So they also receive um, extensions from these uh, investing layer of a deep cervical fascia okay so mainly that is the horizontal tracing uh, if you actually do it at any given level 